716 at KLIF. Good morning. I'm Dave Williams with Amy Shadroff. Cybersecurity is the top priority for, uh, well, for all of us, uh, certainly for the U.S. government and the Trump administration, and they are taking steps to try to make sure that government systems are safe. And this is something uh, that uh, should be of concern to every American. Yeah, but are these measures enough? Joining us to talk about this is attorney and cybersecurity expert Sean Tuma with Chief N. Stone. Good morning, Mr. Tuma. Good morning, Amy. Uh, this is interesting because over the weekend, the U.S. Army held a computer hacking class for kids at DEF CON in Vegas. Why are they training these kids to, to be hackers? Well, because we can't get enough people in the job force that are trained to be hackers or de- or defend against hackers. And so we need to start training them as kids. And it's a uh, it's an effective technique because the reality is the only way you can teach someone how to defend against attackers is to teach them how to do it as well. And so the hope is we can get them while they're young, train them up right and have a great workforce in the future. Don't know if you saw this over over the weekend. I, I saw this story and I thought, whoa, this is this is uh, something. It's uh, technology China now announcing uh, via the BBC that uh, they have they've come up with a quantum cryptography system that makes uh, makes it virtually a system unhackable. Um, have you heard about that? I have. You know, we have uh, quantum computing has raised quite a few concerns about security because. Uh, encryption or cryptography has been viewed as a real safe means of protecting data in the past. But with quantum computing, it'll render all the past encryption obsolete because it'll be able to solve the algorithm that quickly. But now with this new quantum cryptology, it's just a new step, a new level. And, um, you know, it's, it's like we have the space race or the nuclear arms race. We have the cyber race as well. It's great that uh, the U.S. government wants to train on all these kids on how to be hackers, but what happens if one of these kids uh, tries to turn on the U.S. government and then tries to do things here? Well, they will, um, and it's it's understood and accepted that some of these kids will do that. The reality is a lot of this hacking, um, this information, is available on YouTube. Um, it's available on kids talking to each other on Xbox. And so when kids want to learn how to hack and do, do bad things with it, there's the information out there. The hope here is that we can bring these kids in, start training them, and teach them the ethics and the values and the importance of, of doing it the right way and for the right reasons. And, you know, we have a, uh, a program called the uh, Cyber Patriots that does the same thing across the country. And, and it's a competition for kids. And, the re- you know, what, what we're looking at is cyber is so important in our lives now. It's ubiquitous in our world and in our lives. And we've got to start people out as kids by training them and helping them understand what's going on and hopefully being able to protect us in the future. We're talking with attorney and cybersecurity expert Sean Tuma with Sheaf and Stone. We're talking about uh, cybersecurity and uh, systems that are unhackable and and the future of such things uh, Sean on a on a you know on a personal level I've always uh, said that uh, if you if you're gonna say something in an email or in a message that you wouldn't want to be repeated you'd better not say it and I'm thinking the same thing could be applied to uh, governments that's right Dave look there is no such thing as being secure anymore at some level, there's somebody somewhere that can break all of it. I just, I firmly believe that. So if you have something that important, you know, if it's the, the secret formula to Coca-Cola or whatever else, don't put it in digital form um, because at some level, somebody will figure out a way to get to it. At the DEF CON Cybersecurity Conference, there was also a competition held so hackers could compromise voting machines, and it took people less than 90 minutes to compromise those voting machines Uh, gosh that's kind of scary and what does that signal for the safety and security of elections well amy it shows what we already knew and what many of us have been talking about for a few years now and that's that a voting machine is nothing more than a different form of a computer 
you know, at its core, it's a computer, and, and all computers are hackable. And so when you have adversaries that, that train their sites at that kind of computer, they'll figure out a way to get in. And so the, the real purpose in doing this was to raise awareness of the need to have more security uh, focused on our elections and on our voting machines and to not wait until three months before the, the presidential election next time to really start saying, oh, wow, this could be a problem. You know, let's pay attention to it now. Let's start testing our voting machines, uh, you know, and and putting procedures in place early to not make them secure because that's impossible, but to make them as secure as as we practically can. Okay. You, you you just said uh, not make them secure because that's impossible. Will we get to a point where cybersecurity will be absolute for the entire world? I don't think so, Dave. And if we do, I don't know that I want to live in that world. Um, because, you know, what makes cybersecurity unique from a lot of other things is you have an active adversary on the other side combating every step you take. So it's like warfare. You know, you take a step to defend, then they take another step, or they, they had, like Sun Zeus taught, adapt and, and, you know, mold their techniques to the environment and change. And so it's a battle, you know, back and forth. And if we ever got to a point where we had complete security, I would think we have probably lost most of, if not all of the privacy we have and what, you know, our humanity, what makes us human. Because I I don't know in my mind sitting here today in 2017 that that's possible without complete control over every aspect of our lives. President Trump says he wants to split U.S. Cyber Command off from the NSA because they work differently on a fundamental level. And I guess lawmakers are starting to get that ball rolling. Do you think this could help the flow of intelligence and information? I I do think this could be a positive step because what we see right now is the, the U.S. Cyber Command is trying to wear too many hats. You know, the NSA is an intelligence organization and, and at its core, it's designed to collect and gather and analyze information. But in today's world, you know, cyber is the weapon of choice for warfare, espionage, you know, you name it. We see it, cyber attacks before we see traditional kinetic type attacks. And so what this really is doing is recognizing that cyber is a new domain of warfare, just like land, air, sea, space. And we need to treat it like it is by having a dedicated branch focused not just on on the defensive or the analytical side of gathering information, but on, on attacking as well. And the NSA was not designed for attacking. And so uh, separating it out should create uh, a more offensive, capable uh, cyber cyber branch within our, our military, which is what we're really looking at here. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. Certainly a lot to think about. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank Very you. Very informative. Have a great week. That's Sean Tuma with Sheaf and Stone Attorneys.